It is a land surrounded by three mountain ranges, guarding an unspeakable evil within. While it would not become the dwelling of the Dark Lord until the Second Age, its origin lies in a darkness long before. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the history of Mordor. One of the most prominent features of Mordor is also one of its oldest, Mount Doom. The volcano where Sauron would later create his ruling ring is created by Morgoth in the First Age. In the peoples of Middle-earth, it says even while Sauron was secretly making Mordor his stronghold, it may have already been called by this elvish name because of its volcano Orodruin and its eruptions, which were not made by Sauron but were a relic of the devastating works of Melkor in the Long First Age. In the Silmarillion we are also told, but Melkor too was there from the first, and he meddled in all that was done, turning it, if he might, to his own desires and purposes, and he kindled great fires. When therefore earth was yet young and full of flame, Melkor coveted it, and he said to the other Valar, this shall be my own kingdom, and I name it unto myself. The elvish name of Mordor means black land in Sindarin. The dwarves call it Nargun. While Sauron would become synonymous with the land, another evil force would inhabit it first. For escaping from the War of Wrath at the end of the First Age was the great spider Shelob who makes her home in the Efel Duath, the Mountains of Shadow. There she would feed on elves and men, either living near or passing by her home, making these mountains among the most feared in all Middle-earth. The Efel Duath not only runs along the western border of Mordor, but also curves along the south as well. In the northwest, it meets the Ered Lithui, or Ash Mountains which run roughly 500 miles, marking Mordor's northern border. 1,000 years into the Second Age, Sauron settles in Mordor, raising a dark tower in the northwest, the fortress of Barad-dûr. For well over 2,000 years, Sauron would rule the lands of Mordor. Neither his defeat in the War of the Elves and Sauron in Eregion, nor his captivity at the hands of the Numenorians would release his stranglehold on these lands, nor his influence in both the East and the South. In 3434 of the Second Age, the last alliance of elves and men comes to Mordor in an effort to overthrow the Dark Lord. They come to the northwest corner of his lands, at a gap between the Efel Duath and the Ered Lithui, where Sauron had built a gate. The alliance drives through the Moranon, across the Valley of Udun, and the desert plateau of Gorgoroth. After a seven-year siege of Barad-dûr, Sauron is defeated on the slopes of Mount Doom, and for a time, the land of Mordor is freed from his malice. In an effort to guard against the return of the enemy, the Gondorians construct great watchtowers and fortresses around Mordor. At the Moranon, they build two tall towers on either side of the Black Gate, Karkost, meaning Fangfort, and Narkost, meaning Bitter Biting Fort. Together, they are called the Towers of the Teeth. While not confirmed to be constructed by Gondorians, it's possible that the nearby tower of Durthang is one such structure. It overlooks the Valley of Udun and the Pass of the Eisenmouth. Isildur city of Minas Ithil already stood at the entrance of a pass into Mordor but the Gondorians build a tower within Mordor itself to better defend Minas Ithil and the lands of Ithilien from the remnants of Sauron's forces. This was the Tower of Kirith Ungol, and for many years the Gondorians stationed there would guard the pass and observe movements in Mordor itself. With these fortresses, Gondor would long defend against the return of the enemy. However, in 1635 of the Third Age, Middle-earth would fall under the Great Plague, and Gondor would be especially hard hit. So great were their losses that the fortresses guarding Mordor are abandoned and their troops recalled. With no one guarding against it, 
evil things begin to populate Mordor once more. In 1980, following the fall of his northern kingdom of Angmar, the Lord of the Nazgul returns to Mordor and summons the other eight ringwraiths. Together they begin the work of preparing for the Dark Lord's return. In 2000 of the Third Age, the Nazgul go on the offensive, attacking the Gondorian city of Minas Ithil. After two years of siege, the city falls, and it would be transformed into the dreadful fortress of Minas Morgul, dwelling place of the Witch King himself. The fortresses that had meant to guard against the evils of Mordor are now used to defend them. As Sauron's forces take control of the Towers of the Teeth, Durthang, and the Tower of Kirith Ungol. Sauron would first re-emerge not in Mordor, but in Dol Guldur in the north. However, in 2941 of the Third Age, the White Council attacks the old fortress, forcing Sauron to flee to his original abode. There, in 2951, he declares himself openly and begins rebuilding Barad-dûr, completing construction in 2953. The following year, an ominous sign would come from the long dormant Orodruin. Sauron arose again and declared himself openly, and he re-entered Mordor long prepared for him. Then Barad-dûr was raised once more, and Mount Doom burst into flame, and the last of the folk of Ithilien fled far away. While the majority of the events and structures in Mordor are located in the northwest of the realm, there is also a large area that covers the south and east of Mordor called Nurn. While Gorgoroth was an actual desert wasteland, filled with pits and fumes issuing from fissures in the ground, the lands of Nurn were much more fertile. While it's believed there were also orcs in these lands, they are worked by men who are enslaved by Sauron, forced to work the fields around Lake Nurnen to feed Sauron's armies. The Sea of Nurnen, which translates to sad water or dead water, is so named because it contains salt water. Despite this, the ash that is blown to Nurn from Mount Doom makes its soil rich in nutrients, allowing for dry land farming. From Baradur, Sauron would command his legions of orcs in the War of the Ring in the late Third Age. Easterlings and Haradrim loyal to the Dark Lord would pour into Mordor via the Black Gate, and the Witch King would lead Sauron's armies in their attack on Gondor from Minas Morgul. Finally, after the defeat and death of the Witch King on the Pelennor Fields, Aragorn would lead a host to the Black Gate. And just as his great ancestor Elendil over 3,000 years earlier, Aragorn leads the host of the West in war against Sauron. Unlike before, Sauron's ruin would come in secret. As Frodo and Sam had traversed his lands of Mordor, and coming to Mount Doom itself, the ring would be destroyed when Gollum slips into its fiery depths. Barad-dûr, whose very foundations were bound to the One Ring, collapses into ruin, along with the Black Gate and the Towers of the Teeth. The earth gaped, and from deep rifts and pits smoke and fumes leaped up. The mountain was convulsed. Great rents opened in its side. Slow rivers of fire came down the long slopes. A rain of hot ash was falling. With the destruction of the ring, Mount Doom explodes, as Sauron is finally defeated. In the aftermath of the Dark Lord's fall, Mordor is mostly depopulated, as the orcs within had either been killed or fled. In his victory, Aragorn frees the slaves of Mordor, decreeing that the lands of Nurn shall ever after be theirs to rule. As for Minas Morgul, the effects of centuries of Nazgul control had taken its toll. Aragorn declares that it shall be utterly destroyed, and while in time it may come to be made clean, no man would dwell there for many long years. From the creation of Mount Doom to Sauron's demise, Mordor would see thousands of years of evil ravage its lands. Whether Minas Morgul or any of the northwest of Mordor would ever truly recover from Sauron's evil dominion, we can only guess. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, 
Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.